Hello and welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church. I am Pastor Josh Ayler. We are grateful that you are here for worship with us this morning. We are in the third Sunday of our Easter season, so we continue to proclaim our risen Christ. Let us begin. gathered together today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead to sin and make, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Let us pray. O oh God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hello. This is Acts chapter 2, verses 14 and 36 through 41. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him, both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, 
Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. <laughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our reading for today from Acts chapter 2. It's a bit of a hodgepodge, a piece together kind of a service, if you will, because we're hearing parts of Peter's sermon. Chapter 2 is Peter's sermon, and it's a response to the Pentecost event, which we're not supposed to know about yet, so we piece ourselves through it without actually talking about it. We're not supposed to actually have Pentecost until Pentecost, which is at the end of May. So, spoiler alert, there's this moment that happens when the Holy Spirit blows through this worship house where the disciples are, and it blows out the windows and the doors, and there's tongues of flame on the heads of the disciples. Maybe you've heard this story before. And then the disciples who were in this house, they begin speaking, and they're speaking in dialects and languages that draw in all of the people who have gathered to Jerusalem, all these different languages and peoples from around the world, as it were, become centered in on this moment. They hear God speaking to them, and they are drawn in. And Peter starts preaching. So our reading for today has this introductory piece where Peter welcomes the people who have gathered to hear him preach. And then we hear like the last part. It's almost getting to a climactic moment already. We missed all the other stuff, which maybe that is the best way to hear a sermon. We don't have to hear all the background footage. Just get to the meat, to the heart. Then right there in verse 36, that's where I want us to hang out. Verse 36. Therefore, let all Israel know beyond question that God has made this Jesus... Whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. This Jesus, whom God has made, whom you crucified. It's quite a way to jump into a sermon at this point where it seems like Paul, Peter is making this accusatory statement to this large crowd of people who have gathered around, responding to God's work through the Holy Spirit, drawn them in so they can hear the promise of God. And Peter practically feels like he's turning on them by saying, whom you crucified. I want us to stay with this particular verse, even though this verse might make us a little twitchy, a little uncomfortable, we might feel a little bit awkward, this verse, along with verses we can find in the Gospel of John, verses we can find in other letters and other writings here in the Christian writings, they have been kind of cobbled together to create a quilt or a fabric or maybe a, a flag, if you will, that becomes part of the mantra of anti-Semitic thinking. And when we think of anti-Semitic thinking, we start thinking about People who are doing hateful acts and spray painting signs on the sides of synagogues and, and even taking life. Anti Semitic thinking can even boil down to sometimes what you and I will struggle with when we wrestle with how our faith, we will convince ourselves, is different than the faith of our Jewish siblings. We humans, it's not an American thing, it's a human thing because we see it all throughout Scripture. We humans love a good scapegoat. We love to have someone we can blame, someone we can point to and say it is their fault. The FBI is reporting that since about mid-March, hate crimes against Asian Americans has been on the rise. There's an organization in California that is keeping track of hate crimes through Asian Americans, specifically in that state. They're receiving 100 reports a day. Crimes as, as light and minor, if you will, as people speaking racial slurs all the way up to people taking life. As one story we may have heard of a gentleman who took the life of a family, an Asian American family, because of coronavirus and because of his fear and because of his hatred. We hear verses like this, and it feels wrong. It feels raw. It makes us uncomfortable to imagine that there would be any sort of a verse like this anywhere in the Bible. Some sort of divisive language that wants to separate us, or it sounds like it wants to separate us from them. To create some sort of a distinction. So we also have to think about Peter. 
Peter in chapter 2 of the book of Acts is already becoming a bit of a, a hero and it will only build his prominence, his prosperity, his ability to attract crowds. It will only keep going as we keep moving through Acts. He will be going around practically walking with soapboxes to jump on at all times. We can imagine him having this portable pulpit that he has in the back of a chariot or a cart. And anytime he encounters a group of people, he just pulls it out and starts preaching again. Peter. In our modern day, he would be the guy who would have the worship space of thousands and people would be gathering day after day to hear him speak. He is a prominent person in the book of Acts. And here early on, already with a little bit of prestige and a little bit of, of this prominence beginning to build already in this first prominent sermon he gives in chapter 2, it sounds like he is turning on the crowds and saying, Whom you crucified? The gospel writer Luke also wrote Acts. So we have the ability to actually rewind through Acts, it's only two chapters at this point, but we can rewind back into the Gospel of Luke and we might remember the story of Peter denying Jesus. Not once, not twice, three times Peter denies Jesus. Three times Peter has the opportunity to stand with Jesus in some way. Now we can imagine, because this was a, a Roman event, this crucifixion, we could assume that because the Jewish authorities had all their political power and because the Roman authorities had all of their power, Peter could have said, yep, I know that guy, and he would have been wrapped up in chains and, and flogged and abused and harmed the same way that Jesus was. It would not have gone well for Peter. He would not become some sort of a superhero who would have liberated Jesus and then all of the people, and then we would be singing songs of praise about Peter and his heroics. He probably would have died. A shameful, hateful day, death, the same way that Jesus died. But in a moment, when he's given the opportunity to stand with Jesus, he turns his back on God. He separates himself from God. He separates himself from Jesus. So when Peter is standing, we can now imagine that the soapbox is gone and the pulpit is gone. And so we can now maybe imagine Peter just standing with these crowds of people. And when he says, whom you crucified... He's not maybe just talking about the crowds. He's talking about himself. Naming some of his own responsibility in what happened to Jesus. Now you and I, again, because we are naturally always going to be looking for the division and the separations. When we read stories like this, we will think to ourselves, well, that was 2,000 years ago. That was the, the crucifixion event. That was the Roman occupation. And that was a, a horrible, hateful government that happened in a time where they were destroying lives and doing hateful things. And, and we're not like that anymore. We're far more civilized. And, and that was so long ago that that doesn't have anything to do with us. Except that we also remember, friends, that when we stand around the baptismal font, we remind ourselves and those who are being baptized in that moment of the baptismal promise that we are being drowned in those waters and we are being brought back up, bound to Christ, recreated and new. And every time we dip our hands into that water or wash our hands or splash water on our face in the morning, we are reminding ourselves of this sacred baptismal promise that's carried on throughout creation, time, and history, that God continues to come to us and give us new life. Every day, we turn from God. When we gather back up in this space and in the state of Illinois, it will be another month at least, and even when we get back together, our worship will look different, but we can still look forward to the day when we gather in this space, and we will gather around the table or gather around the altar, and we will share in that meal where the bread and wine becomes the body and blood of Christ. And in those words, we remember the love of Christ who transforms us and makes us new, recreated back into God's image. And we do this every day. We are not so far from the crucifixion of Christ. Our brokenness, our sinfulness, our want to serve ourselves, our greed, our pride, all the things continually convince us to turn ourselves from God. To create a line between ourselves and God, maybe to create a line between ourselves and our neighbors, maybe create a line between ourselves and someone who we want to blame for our circumstances or the way that our life is going this day, it has to be the banks. 
It has to be our employer. It has to be that group of people who came across the border at that particular time and came into this country. It has to be someone else. It cannot simply be. Our natural human tendency is to look for blame, to look for a scapegoat. And Jesus steps in. And Jesus knows our brokenness, and Jesus knows our guilt and our shame and our fear and our despondency and our willingness to turn from God, and Jesus continues to come for us. The story of Peter is the story of the disciples, the story of you and me. The same day in the Gospel of John, we hear, in the same day when Mary recognizes Jesus out in the garden, we know that story really well, the same day Jesus then goes and tracks down the disciples. Now they've locked themselves in because they're fearful of what might happen to their lives, justifiably so. But he comes to them and he blows through the door and he grants them peace. Jesus keeps coming. He continues to engage our lives, continues to love us, continues to walk with us. These words that Peter is speaking are very much words that probably weigh heavy on his heart and in his thoughts. But even in these words, he proclaims that Jesus is Christ because our faith is oriented around the cross and Easter. This season, when every single day we could proclaim that Christ is risen, alleluia. We are part of new life. We are part of a new creation. We are part of new hope. And we are bound to our community. We are bound to each other. We are being reshaped and reformed and renewed by God's love. All this season, through many and various ways, I am going to invite us to figure out ways to act out our faith. I know we're shelter in place here in the the state of Illinois. So we have some barriers and some challenges. But Jesus invites us to act out our faith. But before we do that as a response, first, Jesus acts out the promise of God. The steadfast promise of unbreakable grace that is poured into our lives every day. You are loved. You are forgiven. Jesus will continue to walk in your life. Jesus will continue to feed us and nourish us and bind us together as community. So that we can stand together. That we can love each other. And we can proclaim a new hope spreading and cascading across our lives. Amen.
Together we confess our faith by the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On behalf of creation, our community, and those of us who are gathered together in this time, we offer our prayers to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, when we seek opportunities for separation, we pray that you bind us together. Lord, when we go looking for scapegoats, remind us of our responsibility and your love. Help us to remember that we are forgiven and that we are renewed. Lord, we continue to pray for our healthcare workers, for doctors, for nurses, for CNAs. We pray for janitors and for maintenance staff. We pray for EMS and first responders. We pray for those in homes who are caring for those who are in need. Lord, we pray especially for nursing homes. We pray for Pinecrest here in our community and the homes that we know well in our lives. We pray for care facilities. We pray for spaces that are vulnerable to sickness and illness. Lord, we also pray for prisons, for corrections officers, and for those who are behind bars, who are held captive by their spaces, and who are vulnerable to sickness. Lord, we pray for the victims of severe weather, those who are enduring the rebuilding task of tornadoes and floods, and have no way to be surrounded by their loved ones and by care. We pray for FEMA and for volunteer organizations that they're able to respond and to help build as able. Lord, we pray for all those in our lives who have lost loved ones, those who have died because of COVID, but those who have also died for the many and various reasons that we all die. Lord, we pray for our friends and family who are left mourning, who are left wondering, who are left in their homes alone. In this time of separation, bind us to them in love and prayer. Lord, we pray for creation, and we pray for the farmers who are preparing to enter back into the fields. We give you thanks for their careful stewardship of the land and of the creatures. And Lord, we offer to you now the prayers that linger in our hearts. Lord, in this community, we pray for our sister congregations. We pray for the Brethren Church, Disciples United Methodist. We pray for the Evangelical Free Church. We pray for all those who are faithful, who are longing to be in their community. Gracious God, receive these prayers we humbly offer and respond with mercy and love. Confident that you are listening and know our every concern, we close these prayers as together we say, Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We share that peace with each other. God's peace, Jamie. Jackson. God's peace, Karen. And we continue with our offering. Reminder, as always, that if you have a few extra coins together, gather those up. We continue in this month to be saving our coins for Community BBS. We are hopeful that maybe we will be able to offer it this summer in mid July, but we continue to gather up our coins for those. And we thank you, all of you who have sent in your offerings, whether you've done it online, mailed them in, dropped them off. Thank you for supporting the ministries of Trinity. Let us pray. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small in your grandeur, and yet you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed our neighbors as you care for us, and bind us to each other in service and love. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
As we are without communion, we will offer this prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in Holy Communion according to your promise. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you in the sacrament, come to my heart in the spirit. I embrace you now as if you were here and unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be separated from you. And as we trust in your presence, we offer the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We are sent forth in prayer. Let us pray. God be in our heads and in our understanding. God be in our eyes and in our looking. God be in our mouth and in our speaking. God be in our heart and in our thinking. God be at the end and in our departing. In your name we pray. Amen. People of the risen Christ, today is the day that our Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Continue onward confident that Christ is moving with you and the Holy Spirit breathes new life into you. Be blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit this day and every day, wherever you may go. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go forth in joy. Live this good news. Thanks be to God.